as we draw closer to the end of season one, I still like to applaud you guys for making it this far to the end of season one. Oh, but wait, I'm actually dressed in council wear. <laughs> Many of you may be asking why I'm dressed like this. It's because in the courts of law, we are required to dress like this, especially for serious issues. But taking you back to how I was dressed in the previous video, that was just something of a celebratory kind of matter. However, back to the point. Hey everyone, Terry here, and it's now time to simplify the law. Today, I'm here to talk to you about and do what's called a Q&A, a question approach kind of topic, where I'm going to address a number of comments that people have been leaving in the comment section. And once this intro is done, then we're going to go to the actual part where I'm actually addressing all of these comments. So let's dive right in my tribe. From all the various videos I've been doing, there have been many comments in the comment section over across many of the 62 videos I've now done on my channel. Many of them have come up in different videos like intellectual property rights, insurance, land, to mention but a few. And there have been a backlog of comments that I have not been commenting on. However, this video is dedicated to you, the viewer, you, the comment section person, you, that person who has always wanted to give me a comment or who has always wanted to ask me a question. So, today we're tackling land transactions and we're targeting specific questions that people have been asking because I realize the Q&As are going to be so many. This is now a different category and I'll be doing Q&A type of question approach videos as time goes on. Every time I'll be having family, land transactions, IP, whatever, whatever sector of law you want to do. So, if you have any comments that you want in a future video, please leave it in the comment section and I will see it. So, let's dive right in into the first question. Land transactions, people. Land. So, this one is by Jack Bayan, and he left a comment in my earlier video, which I did on land transactions, called How to Legally Buy and Protect Land in Uganda. This question is, Terry, how do people, how do you deal with quotas on the land? Okay, that's a very interesting question, which entails a lot of things. You need to understand that squatters have a right on your land. Let me just be very direct. If I, Terry Kahuma, buy from Moses Sekalembe, his, his said land, and I bought it in Buyikwe, and I, found, and I find that as Moses was having land, <clears throat> as Moses was having his land, and there were already existing people in that land, even when he bought the land, he has been living with them, and they are unchallenged. Those are called squatters. Squatters, when it comes to land transactions, squatters have what's called equitable right or equitable interest. Now, this is where I dig right into it. In land transactions, we have equitable interest and we have legal interest. Now, in Uganda, we have me, me Terry Kahuma, bought land from Moses Sekalim. So, I have legal interest because I have the legal title. Squatters, bona fide occupants, lawful occupants, they all have equitable interest. An equitable interest is you don't have direct interest in the land or in the said subject matter, but you have an interest there and it's enforceable in the courts of law. Therefore, when we look at squatters, there are different categories of people. Squatters people who have stayed on the land for 12 years and beyond. Then we also have bona fide, bona fide occupants of the land. We have lawful occupants. According to section 29, of the land act the land amendment act actually now it was amended recently we have three categories of people who have equitable interests usually after purchase of land we have squatters we have we have equitable i mean we have lawful occupants and we have bona fide occupants therefore what i can tell you is that squatters actually have a right on the land under section 29 subsection 2e you cannot evict them from the land especially if they can prove that they were unchallenged living on the land or they can prove that you knew all this time that you were living on your land and you still never challenged it at all so jack beyond to answer your question the squatters have equitable interest and therefore you cannot remove them or evict them from the land squatters actually have an enforceable right and i would say the best solution if you've just bought land the best solution is to actually give them the option of buying that portion of land and that's stipulated under section 35 subsection 2 of the land amendment act 
question number two this one is asked by Emmanuel okay wrote so Emmanuel you asked about Terry give us the different types of land tenure systems in Uganda okay that's an interesting one so Mr. Emmanuel and also for all viewers there the different land tenure systems are stipulated under the the Constitution of Uganda 1995 as amended this is under article 237 of the Constitution it gives us the different land tenure systems in Uganda. We have Milo land system, we have leasehold kind of system, we have freehold kind of system, and we have customary land tenure system. So all these four types of systems, they mainly operate, they operate in Uganda in general, but they mainly operate here in Buganda because this was where the law really originated from. This is from the missionaries and all of that, they originated. They built up the law from Buganda, which is central Uganda. So, all of these different land tenure systems will give us different kinds of issues to be dealt with. For example, foreigners, like I did in an earlier video, foreigners cannot buy land in Uganda. They can only lease land. Secondly, when you have freehold kind of system, it's a different kind of system in which you can operate different kind of land transactions. Customary kind of system and also Milo land kind of system. These were, these were mainly partitioned. Uh, in the Buganda government, especially when the missionaries came, they said there's Milo land kind of system and there's also customary kind of system. So that's answering question two. Emmanuel, thank you so much for that question. So here's the very big question: how to how to convert leasehold into freehold? Like I've already explained to you, there are different kind of land tenure systems. There's freehold, there's Milo land, there's leasehold, and there's also customary land tenure system but here the question is how to convert leasehold to freehold there first of all the applicant must have different forms you know in the land in the land act we have different forms in the back of the of most acts there are forms so you're supposed to pick letters in those different forms is form 5 form 6 form 12 form 23 and form 15 all of these are different forms and letters that you have to fill in <clears throat> Another thing you must have is three passport size photos. You must have a signature from from the RDC of or from the RDC and also the di the director of the of the district land board. Then you must also have a letter requesting the land board of a certain district. Let's say it's Boikwe, let's say it's Kapchora, Kampala, Masindi, Hoima. You have different you must have a letter which is requesting you to convert from from leasehold into freehold because what you're trying to do is convert an entire tenure system in the database of the land board into another land tenure system so in this case it's converting freehold leasehold into freehold then you must also have three authentic deed plans actually you cannot have duplicate deed plans but it's better to have the full authentic deed plans which are three copies and after that like I'd said earlier, you also have a signature and a letter from, from the district land board of that particular district requesting you to change your land tenure system from leasehold to freehold. But if I may explain again, leasehold, lease, uh, what is a lease? Let, let, me, let me also dwell into that. A lease is an agreement between two people in which a registered owner of land, to simplify it very well, a registered owner of land is giving you his land he's in a way renting to you his land for a specific period of time in uganda normally it's to a period of 49 years and 99 years that's a lease freehold is its own kind of tenure system that i will tackle in another video but i wanted you to understand leasehold freehold is basically you you're transacting you're doing land transactions in a kind of free kind of tenure system it's not like leasehold where there is a certain lease in fact, there is a lease document where you're supposed to sign and give all the details of that document. I mean of the land in which you're, you're leasing, what you're going to do in the land and that kind of thing. So let's go to step two. Emmanuel, I'm still with you and also viewers who want to learn more about land transactions. So now we're down in step one, let's go to step two. Step two is that the moment you've paid, receipt, you've, you've paid the fee for converting leasehold into freehold, then they give you a receipt of payment and a copy of all the documents that you have that you have submitted to the land board. Let's go through the documents again. Those are the three authentic deed plans. That is the receipt of payment. That is a letter requesting 
the land board to convert your leasehold into freehold so the moment the applicant who is you the viewer moment the applicant has been given a copy of all of these documents they give you a copy of whether they give you a copy of a document of a transfer document in other words which is converting leasehold into freehold so the moment they give you your com your copy of the document converting leasehold into freehold then you check after 10 working days to see whether your appro your document has either been approved or rejected so for those of you who may want to be converting leasehold to freehold let's go through the steps again you must have especially documents i want you to pay attention to these documents you must have du uh, duplicates of the deed plans after submitting in your three after submitting in your three authentic deed plans then you must have a receipt of payment you must have a transfer form letter in which you're submitting it to the land board requesting them to convert your leasehold into freehold then you must also have passport size photos you must have the money ready you must have different forms because like i told you in most of the acts in uganda that we have we have different forms so uh, be behind the land amendment act we have form form four form five form six you can even find them in the registration of titles act because that's where majority of the forms are especially when it comes to transfer of of land into a different tenure kind of system let's go to step three step three we then go to this is actually one of the big, the biggest steps in transferring your land from leasehold to freehold so the moment your form has been accepted which is a transfer deed form which is you're transferring your land from leasehold into into freehold you will submit it to the district land board like i told you in step one and two you wait for 10 working days then you wait for whether it has been approved or rejected now step three is a gist of the matter once you've found out that the land board has then accepted your transfer form or your transfer request then after 10 working days you can then go and pick your transfer form you can actually pick your freehold title this is the biggest step this transitions from step three to step four you now pick your freehold title because you basically what you're doing in these steps is you're requesting the land board to to issue issue out to you a freehold title you're changing from a leasehold title to a freehold title so after all of that has been said and done you then go to the district land board after 10 working days of approval and they've approved your thing then they issued you a freehold title so after that let's go to the final step four and then move on to other questions after step three is done then the district land board upon you requesting for an issuance of your freehold title then they will give you the applicant a duplicate freehold title for you to hold on to it for about 20 working days for them to fully give you the original freehold title that they have now issued for you remember you're transferring leasehold into freehold so a freehold kind of system is very different so therefore once everything has been stamped like for example your duplicate certificate of your du your duplicate freehold title has been stamped and also the original has been stamped then the identification of documents that you submitted in to the land board has also been stamped and they have verified that you're the person it's you terry kahuma who is transferring his leasehold title into freehold title and without a doubt they now give you your certificate of title which is your freehold title you now a proud owner of your freehold land therefore you're no longer the owner of a leasehold title and therefore they issue out to you even the original after 20 working days so you will even you have both the duplicate and the original but ideally they keep the a duplicate and you maintain the original freehold title so there you go guys oh my phone is actually here emmanuel i hope that question has been answered let's move on to the next question so this is the fifth question in our q and a guys we're really going to the we're actually about to finalize but i just wanted to give you a feel of how q and a kind of questions are answered so that you guys can even leave more comments in the comment section more questions so i can answer them in future q and a questions let's dive into the fifth question this one is by don smith don you asked me about terry how can leasing apply to farmlands one don i would just like to tell you that yes you can lease land you can lease a farmland actually most 
land most land which is leased are actually farmlands most people who lease lands are actually in farm areas most leases in uganda it being an agricultural state uganda actually according to statistics by the united nations by world bank uganda is one of the biggest agricultural states in the in the world especially in africa so just to answer you don smith yes this also applies to farmlands in fact it especially applies to farmlands i would just like to reiterate to you again is that a lease is basically in simple terms a lease is you going to a person who owns land you want to you want to gazette that land maybe for farming purposes maybe you want to construct an industry there and by the way according to the national planning act of uganda you cannot just lease land for example you can't lease land in kololo and then you want to put a farm land area there the the national planning act of uganda will also entail things like the kcca act it will come up with many bodies which will not just let you lease farming area land in kololo or industrial area or in naguru ideally you'd want to lease land in jinja ideally you want to lease land in masindi in hoima in kapchora land where first of all for even you to lease land you must first tell the national planning authority wh what you're going to do with that lease land you must also tell national forest authority what you're going to do because you may have to cut down trees so don smith actually that's a very good question even to you viewers this is a very important thing because many people may not know they may think leasing land is a very easy thing but you need first designate the land have decimal points and we must also know what you're going to lease the land for is it for farming is it for industrial purposes then from there you can know which area in which to lease and you must also find a, a potential buyer of course you must be with the uh, council and uh, once council has taken you through all the steps then then you may have your lease so don smith i hope that answers your question this one is by william do william you asked i think you must be from china i don't know but william do you asked about terry what is a caveat a caveat is basically a document which is produced by court and requested for by a caveat of someone who has interest in the land and this is basically a document stopping any further dealing on a land which is in question which is a disputed a land which is basically a piece of land which is in question or in, a, in the middle of a dispute stopping any further dealings on that land until a further dispute is come with me viewers a further dispute is settled so a caveat is basically a document stopping someone from dealing in your land until until further court action is taken a caveat is produced actually a caveat is is given under section 139 of the, code of the land or i mean section 139 of the registration of titles act of uganda so i hope that answers your question so there we go guys that was the first q and a video that we have done in this series of simple legal this was basically the end of season one guys i'm so heartfelt i'm so touched that you finished season one with me this was a wrap up but guys better videos coming your way in season two this has been a wrap up because i've done videos in different kinds of series I've done intellectual property kind of series, land, insurance, and you guys have been there with me throughout the journey. That is why I always take down your comments, both in my phone and in my journal here. And please, I encourage you, always leave, always leave questions and comments in the comment section. I'll always attend to them because I simply leave, I'm here to simplify the law for you. And you guys are my tribe. I'm now calling you guys my tribe because this is a clan, this is a tribe. Simply League has now grown to a huge community. And I'll always be doing QA kind of series. To this time today was for land transactions or land law basically. But always feel free to leave comments in the comment section about family law. Leave comments about adoption, leave comments about anything that goes through your mind, or real estate law, or company law, or employment law. I'll always do QA kind of questions on that on these kinds of laws and until next time thank you so much i hope to simplify the law for you all the time if you want me to always be giving you more and more feedback please don't feel free to hit the subscribe button feel free to hit the comment section and
I'll see you next time.